Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at and unboxing the Unify Switch 8. This is the US 8 60 watt model of the Unify Switch. Now, I purchased this switch mostly because I, I love the Unify equipment and I wanted to make a video about it, but also because I'd like to do gigabit testing between devices, and so I needed a good PoE powered gigabit switch. And uh, for around 99 bucks, this is a really good option. So I'm gonna bring the camera in close. We're gonna take a look at this device. Uh, we're gonna unbox it, and then uh, I will set it up in the Unify controller. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the Unify Switch 8 60 watt version. It's got four standard gigabit ports and then four PoE ports right here for up to four PoE devices. Now it can do up to 60 watts of PoE, but it's pretty rare that you're gonna have devices up that high. I know that like the Unify access points take around two to three watts. A standard PoE phone is gonna take <clears throat> usually under five watts or so, maybe five or six watts. So that's actually a lot of power for these four ports. Um, okay, so let me pull this thing out of here. Uh, here we go, quick start guide. Unify Switch 8, let's pull it out. There we go, look at that sucker. So pretty small, you can see it's just, uh, I mean I can palm this thing, right? So uh, we've got our four PoE ports here. Uh, sorry, our four standard gigabit ports here, and then our four auto-sensing 802.3AF ports right here. Now, one thing to note about this device is that these ports are only 802.3AF, okay? So they do not have the ability to do the 24-volt passive that powers some of the uh, other Ubiquiti equipment, like the nano stations, some of the cameras, uh, as well as the lower end access points like the UAP AC light. Okay, so this is no 24 volt passive capability. If you have 24 volt passive devices that you need to plug into here, you're gonna need to get the 24 volt, uh, the 802.3 AF to 24 volt adapter, which is sold by Ubiquity. Okay, also in the box we have the power cable and uh, some mounting, uh, mounting equipment. Okay, really not much to it. Uh, there is, uh, on the back we've got power and then uh, grounding as well. So if you wanted to uh, ground it out, certainly recommended. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and uh, powered up and connected to Unify. Okay, so here we go. I have a Unify Switch 850 watt. That's where all eight ports are PoE. I've got that sitting right here. And plugged into that with this 10 foot cable is my Unify Switch 8 port just off the side of the screen here. Um, everything is controlled by my Unify controller that's sitting on this cloud key right here. And I also have a USG in the mix. So, okay, so here is the devices view in Unify and we can see that this is already ready for adoption. So if I click adopt, we're gonna go ahead and adopt that uh, Unify Switch 860 watt. Now, if you plug it into the same network as your Unify controller, it should just show up in Unify automatically, uh, as it did in my case. If it didn't, then you have to either figure out what the device's IP address is and then do a set in form, or you have to use some sort of de uh, Ubiquity device discovery tool that is on the same network as your uh, Unify switch. Now, I've covered all of that in other videos, so I'm not gonna cover it here. In this case, it was easy because it was already ready to rock and roll. And there we go, it is now provisioned. I'm gonna click on the MAC address of the device real quickly, click on configuration, and I'm gonna rename it US-8-60Watt, save that. And then finally, it looks like there was an upgrade. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing upgraded and then uh, we will move on to the next steps. Okay, so the switch has been updated. We can see that it is now version 3.7.49. By the way, my Unify version is 5.4.11. Um, and we are going to run an iPerf test. So I have my laptop set up with iPerf running in server mode at 192.168.99.105, and I'm gonna run here iperf3-c for client mode, and then the server I want to run the test against is 192.168.99.105, and we're gonna hope to see speeds 
uh, at gigabit or close to gigabit here. There we go. So we ended up getting about 866 megabits per second. That's okay. I feel like it could be done a little bit better. Let's uh, bump that up. Uh, I'm also connecting to um, my laptop over a USB 3 network card. So that also might be slowing it down a bit. Um, I feel like it should be a little bit better than that. 866 megabits per second. Let's keep trying it and see if we get any different results. Okay, so I think I figured it out. Um, you can see here that I just ran a test off camera and I got 941 megabits per second, which is a lot closer to what I would expect to see on a just straight gigabit to gig gigabit connection. Now, uh, the, uh, the reason I did that off camera is because I had a hunch that the overhead of recording my screen was slowing down the speed test. And I think that's exactly what was happening. So I'm gonna run it again. I'm recording the screen. Uh, I just did a 941 megabit per second uh, speed test. Let's run it again and see if we go back down to about 865, which is again where we are. So very interesting that the overhead on my PC here of just recording the screen is negatively affecting the speed test results. Uh, I wouldn't expect that it would affect bandwidth that much, but uh, perhaps it's just uh, writing so much data to the disk or something uh, that it's screwing up that result. But regardless, we can see if we scroll up here, 941 megabits per second. So I'm at least convinced that the gigabit's working fine in that switch. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will put a link to this switch down below. That is an Amazon affiliate link. If you click on that and purchase it, it doesn't change your price at all, but it does get me a couple dollars for the referral. So I certainly appreciate any referrals that we get. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.